What's a small town dark secret you know? A few months ago there was a brief media kerfuffle in the local papers about someone breaking into a barn and attacking a pony. The account that made it to the papers tactfully omitted the fact that by attack they mean sexual assault. I learned this via a Facebook post shared by a classmate of mine who was friends with the owners of the horse. Edit. I'm not specifying exactly where this took place beyond somewhere in the East Midlands England. Ed. In my town everyone thought that the elementary school music teacher was a pedophile. And a few years ago he got arrested. The school never told us what he got arrested for, but everyone knew what it was for. Turns out he was looking up child pronoun on the school computers. When I was in about first grade, the gym teacher was fired for molesting little girls. Some of the dads went and talked to him and scared him so bad he just disappeared, left all his stuff in his rental place and everything. I was middle aged before I realized I should probably wonder whose land has buried on. My husband's family tells a similar story. His sister came home from the hotel where she worked, crying, with her uniform torn. She didn't want to talk about it, but then told them her boss tried to grate her. Next day dad takes my husband out for a ride, and asks him where sis boss lives. Monday sees goes into work, boss isn't there, and never returns, leaving all his stuff and his paycheck. Dad was a VP with the Teamsters. I think they just scared the guy out of town, but family thinks has in a swamp somewhere with Hoffa. In my mother's ex-town there is a box full of automatic weapon and grenade buried somewhere. My grandfather had been a partisan in Italy during WW2, and at the end of the war his unit instead of handing arms to the government forces decided to hide them in case the Soviets had invaded the country. Now he is dead, and with him also the position of the box. The only other person besides me, and my mother who knows about the box is the last men alive of his unit. Not mine, but my grandmother used to read coffee grinds for neighbors, and friends a form of fortune telling. She didn't believe in it, but it was a way to pass the time, when she was a young mother back in the 50s slash 60s. One day she was reading a neighbor's grinds and said oh, strange. It says you have a baby. The neighbor, who was a single female in the same conservative immigrant community as my grandmother, got skittish and said my grandmother was wrong. My grandmother was like, honey no, look at this cup. That's a baby symbol. And her neighbor starts sobbing. Turns out, she had gotten pregnant as an older teenager, been sent away to have a kid, and ended up giving the baby away to a married friend who lived across the country. And now my grandmother was the only one in town who knew. She stopped reading cups four years after that one. Way too awkward. A kebab shop in my hometown has an underground casino and sells food at the back door after closing hours. There are these old abandoned, mines as in mineral, mines think man made caves in the side of a mountain near my hometown town, where kids used to go to smoke weed, and make out, before they put metal gates over them. When I was in high school there was this huge thing, where a cop went missing, car and all, while he was on duty. He just didn't show up at shift change. This was before GPS and smartphones etc. People thought he'd been killed by gang members or something there were no gangs in the town but everyone was convinced that they came down from the nearest big city to do crimes. Eventually they announced they found him, accidental death, very sad, wife and young kids etc. What wasn't in the news, but everyone knew through word of mouth, he and another cop's wife were having an affair, and they were found in his patrol car in one of the McKeard mines, dead of carbon monoxide poisoning. One of the local utility companies around me had some mysterious fires a while back. A bunch of paperwork and engineering plans went up in this fire, while the company was being investigated for mismanagement of funds and some of their newer facilities not being to the correct specs. It was ruled an accident, and they got an insurance payout. Our local cinema owner would cut out dirty scenes back when movies came on film rolls. For decades, all those butter jokes about Last Tango in Paris went over my head. We didn't catch on until Phobe Kate's bare titters were conspicuously missing from our cut of Fast Times at Ridgemont High. When I was a firefighter we had an arsonist in the city. They would walk around at night until they found a garage door that was left open and then feed start a fire in the garage. It did not matter if the residents were home or not. 
We had no leads other than it was a college student, as there was a discernible pattern of the fires stopping during winter and summer breaks. The police, fire department, and the highest levels of local government worked to keep the nature of fires a secret as they were worried about how it would impact the town's image. So, instead of telling people to close their freaking garage doors at night, nearly 20 families lost their homes. The arsonist was never caught, and presumably is still lighting fires in some other town. Brother and sister slept together. Everyone found out, the sister disappears for almost 10 years. Rumor was she'd killed herself out of embarrassment. Out to the blue she popped back up one day, thinking hoping, we'd all forget nobody forgot, but nobody mentions it either. Village next to my town. A stable is found with a dozen dead cows and more barely alive, standing in a literal meter of their own excrement. Neighbors claimed that they didn't notice anything, that the farmer didn't seem unusual, that I heard, that they all knew, that he was completely neglecting these animals, that he was an alcoholic, and that he threatened his neighbors to set their farms on fire if they dared to report anything. The surviving cows are okay now and were taken away from him. An extremely wealthy grandma had an affair with a pool boy. He called it quits and she accidentally ran him over and killed him. I don't remember if she actually caught her charge for it, but she didn't do any time. The family knows it was deliberate, talks about it nonchalantly like, don't piss grandma off, she ran over the last man that crossed her. Edit, grandma. Small UK town. Man taken to hospital, dies on arrival. Local news had announced that police were looking to speak to witnesses, then announced police have upgraded it to a murder investigation. A few days later, some guys are arrested in connection to the case, a couple of months pass, and fear sentenced to prison for murder. That's all that was made public. Heard through some friends who her family working at the local hospital, that the victim had power drill inflicted injuries to every joint in his body. Grapevine says head sexually assaulted the underage daughter of one of the guys who then murdered him. There's an unexploded nuclear warhead a hydrogen bomb in a swamp 30 miles from here, and it's been here since the 1960s. Always a crazy rumor, until the duty confirmed it in 2012. Apparently every now and again they come and look for it. It's in Goldsboro, North Carolina. My small town priest moved parishes to my church a few years ago. Seemed normal yeah. Not until a few months ago, when we found out he was sleeping with a married woman from the new parish she was at. The woman had kids that attend the school and her husband eventually found out, called the church, and he was basically vanished. Found out recently he moved from his first parish, because he was sleeping around with parishioners there as well, but they wanted to keep it low-key, so they just switched his parish. Family was burned alive when a house caught fire. Rumor has it, their daughter's boyfriend was jealous and set the house on fire. Neighbors heard their screams, but couldn't help. Popular pediatric orthodontist is in jail now for having sex with his high school slash young college aged employees in exchange for painkillers and nitrous. And when it came out he admitted to being high while doing surgery most of the time. So this guy was taking turns on the nitrous tank while taking out my four impacted wisdom teeth. But he knows some people, so that story went away very quickly. Canadian here. Our equivalent to CPS Child Protective Services is called CAS Children's Aid Society here. Their entire office is a joke here and for about a month a while back it was impossible to do anything with them because they devoted the entirety of their resources to full-scale damage control. They had removed four kids from the home of a well-known heroin addict in town. Problem was, she had five kids. For some inconceivable freaking reason they removed all the elders and allowed her to keep the newborn. Only a couple weeks old. The CAS visit was prompted after a postnatal follow-up that was either questionable or missed entirely. I'm not super sure on that. The same fucking night that all the elders are removed mommy dearest decides to spike herself before bed. In her opiate, induced slumber she rolled onto the newborn and smothered him. Their damage control worked too. It never made the papers or anything as far as I have see the only reason I found out was because I was trying to help a friend deal with a serial child abuser ex of hers and when nothing was happening with the cast we went instead to the police. The officer we spoke to was more than happy to let us know why we'd never get anywhere with those incompetent seek suckers. His words. 
I live in a super small town see all the same people constantly. And back in the 80s there was a group of guys my mom went to high school with who were rumored to have killed this poor old man in town and robbed his house blind of drugs and nice belongings. They got away clean except for one of the idiots decided to shoot in the sink. The police collected the sample, but at the time there wasn't the technology to find out who the shoot belonged to. Well around 10 to 15 years later they finally had the technology and they tested that sample. They found out who it belonged to and the guy ended up in prison after getting away with it for so long. My hometown has a famous drug addict, I. E. Everyone knows who he is, has lived there for 70 years and his crimes are town gossip. Most of the time it's small stuff, stolen bikes and once a canoe, that he just leaves somewhere, living in a park, when he doesn't feel like going home for a few days, shoot like that. Has mostly seen as a harmless funny character. His brain is seriously damaged after hard drug use, since his early teens. What is rarely mentioned, is that when he still, had a house he used to steal dogs, and beat them to death in his basement. Growing up. Ame had two teenage children and a baby. It was common knowledge the baby was the offspring of his two kids. It was just one of those things people didn't talk about. After he left office, his daughter gave birth to a kid by him as well. And, no. I did not grow up in Alabama. A kid in my grade, tried to rob an old lady. I think she was 98 years old, and living by herself. After school one day he went to her house, and broken through the back door. Apparently she was going to be robbed without a fight, and had a gun with her. As he went to disarm her the gun went off, and broke a window. He got the gun away from her, and strangled her to death. He started to panic, and shoved her into a closet so no one would find her. A week or two later the neighbors called the police, because something smelled horrible and the police arrived, and found her body. I guess the kid went back, and tried to make it easier to hide the body by cutting it up, and placing the pieces all over the house. When the police finally recovered all the remains, the autopsy showed that she might have been graped. The kid just got a life sentence with no chance for peril. Not exactly a secret, but it's still dark. A lady from my hometown. Married and killed Phil Hartman. It's not exactly a dark secret in the same sense as most of these, because it's not a crazy scandal, but, my town is one of those stereotypical yuppie suburban little Massachusetts towns. Expensive homes, upper middle class, pretty much 100% white, the usual for the area. And people are just starting to realize, that it's full of heroin. Every single person I know, knows at least two people who have overdosed and died. That's not an exaggeration. I know two myself who were close family friends, plus another who died but was revived. It's sad as hell. My town started a campaign a while back, to try to bring awareness to the epidemic. It seems like it's only getting worse. My town is not unique. There are so many of the same stories. Small towns with a dark secret. The opioid crisis in New England is a scary, depressing thing. Edit, I was always aware that heroin was everywhere. I guess the emphasis on New England was more to say that around here, it seems like nobody thinks it could be so bad in such an idyllic and classy read, mostly suburban, affluent and white area. For those asking where I'm at, well just say Norfolk. Close enough. Back in the 80s they'd closed down the old middle school in my town and built a new one fairly close to it. Because the building wasn't that run down, Feed let the little league grades 2 to 6 teams practice in the old school and leave big kids alone at the new school. I'm not really sure how, but a rumor started that there was a satanist club underneath the gym. People claimed they could hear chanting and loud banging noises from under the floor, and it freaked every 1TF out, so the school mostly stopped using it. I found out the truth recently from my friend's mom. Apparently some locals were in a swingers club down there, and she knew, because went once, just to see what it was like. They stopped after people started catching HIV. Not really a small town Venice Beach CA. Henry Hopper Dennis Hopper son grapes teenagers. It's known by everyone who knows him or of him. His friends look out for him, and protect him when he's out partying, and they cover for him as best they can some believe they take part in theorying has been accused many times, many calls to the police, been arrested. He brags about it when he's drunk and brags about how he can't be stopped. 
It's LA and has a D-list celebrity child of an A-lister. The law is no match for his legal team and bottomless trust fund. A guy jumped off a really tall building in my hometown. Ruled a suicide, but rumor has it that he was forced to jump or physically thrown off the building due to his dealings with organized crime. The Devil House. Now, it had been around my hometown for decades. Enough different generations of kids had their own mythos. I had an English teacher that went to the same school in the late 80s. By then it was vacant but someone had painted a pentagram on the wall. You had to know where it was. Pull over on the old highway coming into town at a certain point. There was no driveway or anything, but you could see a gate if you knew where to look. Then you go into the woods a bit and bam, it almost appears out of nowhere on you. That's how well it was hid for the most part. Every high school class would have a couple of people venture out to see it and leave their own small mark. Everyone was just sure satanists or witches were meeting there occasionally. But later, I found out the real story from my dad. Ed asked him, but he didn't make the connection between that house's original purpose and the later myths until I showed him. The reason that hidden house was built was for a former wealthy farmer's lesbian daughter. Didn't have the heart to disown her, so he hid her away there in the late 60s. Because 60s, there were some wild parties out there, and girls were converted to lesbianism red. Already knew damn well they were gay so of course that small southern town assumed the devil was behind it. We have a scenic cliffside really close to town, where a lot of dog walkers go. It has established paths and fences as well as a road running 10 meters away from the edge. It's a hotspot for suicide, but I only found out about it from a coast guard friend, while she was drunk, that they are always on the lookout for bodies at the foot. She said about 10 on average were found a year which is massive for our small town. It was surreal bc I had lived there my whole life and none were ever reported or anything. There were Samaritan organizations that did patrols every now and then but they were fairly quiet about it. Our small town's local mayor had graped his 23 year old daughter for years, starting when she was 7 and ending when she was 23 and finally told someone. He somehow managed to win the next election and is still mayor. Edit, I should mention that some good did come out of the story. Once it became hot news around the town she ended up moving to a new country to start her life over. She ended up meeting a super rich guy who is kind to her and takes care of her. She is now a stay at home mom and her man treats her to a lavish lifestyle. I wish her the best. In my hometown, a girl in her mid twenties was seeing an older man. Most of the town bullied her so much that she eventually killed herself. Only a few people showed up to the funeral most of her family didn't even turn up due to either shame or ignorance. High school boy killed his sister while driving drunk out on farm roads. He became, essentially, the town pariah, but won't leave the area. Worked at the local grocery store as a bagger, never did move up. Nobody ever acknowledged him other than to give him dirty looks, even years later. I don't remember anyone ever actually discussing why everyone hated him, but we all seemed to know anyway, even the newcomers. A girl in my graduating class of 23 kids had a ton of parties at her house. Her mother was only like 15 years older than us, and she always also attended these parties. At one of these parties, two boys in my class attempted to woo the girl's mother. They ended up actually having a main age toy with her mom. I moved away from that small town when I was a sophomore, but I will never forget that poor girl who had a mom that got tag teamed by some high schoolers. Edit, sorry guys, I meant main age Troys. My years of school French failed me. Also there are a lot of people that have similar stories I guess. This incident took place in a small town in Missouri. This was in high school, a group of guys chased down some kid, held him down and stuck a dildo up his ass. The group of kids got in some serious trouble, and that poor guy is forever known as a dildo kid as much as nobody will admit it. This was in a small town, generally run by a half dozen big family names that almost act like redneck mafia families slash cartels. If you're related to one of those families, you can figuratively get away with murder. And sometimes quite literally. Years back, one of the locals R was supposedly out beer hunting and drinking, and noticed a not from around here guy out horse riding in the woods. R just shot him, and left him out in the woods to die. 
either for shoots and giggles, or because the guy was from California, as I likes to claim. He tends to get drunk and brags about it frequently, so it's more common knowledge than a secret. Nothing has ever been done though, since he's from one of the big families in the area, and is related to several officers, a former judge, and a decent chunk of the town. The cops never bothered investigating, just said it was an accidental shooting, and there was no evidence or suspects. Same story they gave when some kids found a couple dead migrant workers in a drainage ditch behind the high school my senior year, cops just said we'll never know, and that was it. Got, I hate that town. Edit, went back and looked up some old articles to refresh my memory. The guy who got shot was a 20 something ronch hand from another nearby small town not from Cali, and apparently there actually was an investigation later, but only after a local author wrote a book about it. Still unsolved, for what it's worth.